Hi, ladies and gentlemen of Memphis. Welcome to another edition of the Memphis Sting Report. I'm Drake Oakey, athletic director, and I'm also has the pleasure of being the boys' basketball varsity coach here at Memphis. And we've just uh, had an opportunity to finish our regular season on a great note. We beat Clintondale in our senior night grand final home game um, just about 10 days ago. And, uh, and beating a Class B school such as Clintondale was a great excitement for us, a great, great, phenomenal evening for all our fans and most importantly our team, but also our exiting seniors. And we have five seniors and we're blessed to have four of them be able to attend today. And we're going to have a chance to go over you know, their careers here. We're going to be able to go over how the season progressed for them and where we're at right now. We've actually completed a district semifinal victory against Brown City in which we were able to beat Brown City 49-46 uh, in three overtimes the other night, which everybody that attended said it was probably one of the best games they've ever seen, not only in Memphis, but in high school basketball. And all four of these seniors played a right, very big part in not only our team, but in that game. So I'd like to welcome our four seniors that are here today, Jacob Natitis, Matt Wenling, Bradley Diener, and Ethan Ryan. Welcome, guys. It's good to be here. Um, just want to kind of go through a few things, you know. I mean, obviously, you know, with the cancellation of the season right now, or I should say the suspension of the season, I know it was hard for all of us to accept. We think we're getting ready for a basketball game and probably about four hours from now in the district final, first one at Memphis and I think over, they said, over 10 years. Uh, so that's a great achievement. Um, and I've heard things that you guys have said periodically over the two years of being a part of the program and so many positive things that you've said about all your previous coaches and stuff like that. But I, you know, one thing that always stuck in my mind was, you know, you always wanted to have a winning season. And I think if I'm not wrong, this is the first winning season you've had at Memphis. Yes, yes sir. Um, Ethan, you know, you've been a part of it longer than anybody. You have nine completed years here at Memphis and four, you know, did you play varsity as a freshman or you were on JV as a freshman? JV as a freshman. Yeah. freshman. So you've had three years on varsity, you know, what were your thoughts on that big game on Wednesday night when we were able to beat Brown City? It's crazy. It was nice to be able to win a district game with my buddies here that I started out playing with back in fifth grade. Fantastic, wasn't it? Yeah. It's funny. I watched a little clip of it, and I think when that buzzer went off, I think we saw you jump higher than you've ever jumped in your life. So <laughs> it's like, God, oh, we want to keep playing. Ethan knows how high you can jump now. But yeah. Uh, you played such a big part in it, and uh, is that something, Ethan, you saw throughout the year that maybe this team has the potential to do it? Mm -hmm. Yep, for sure. That's great. Now, Bradley, you've been a part of it for eight years, and you've been a fantastic leader. Some of our younger guys have come to me personally, you probably don't even know this, and have said things like, my God, he's you know talking to Bradley and our seniors as a whole, but talk, there's been things that I know you've shared with some of our younger kids that have really helped keep them part and, and, and give them leadership and mentorship. Um, you know, Bradley, in your eight years, you know, how, how do you feel your career went and how much enjoyment did you get from the victory the other night as well? Uh, yeah, I've enjoyed playing here ever since I was across the street. It, yeah, I think that was a great way if we don't end up playing at District Final. I think that was a great game to end it out on. It was nice to see. I think this team definitely had a good chance to win, win a District Final because you know, as we've shown against Clintondale and Brown City, there, you know, we don't, they don't, we don't, we don't break under pressure, you know, in close games, right at the end, you know, third overtime. Yeah, so I think there's definitely a good chance to win a district. You know, I'm sorry to see that that might not happen. It was good to end it off the way way we did on a good win. Well, I could agree with you more. You know, the greatest thing is, you know. Very few seniors ever finish their basketball career with a, with a victory. You know, usually you have to win a state championship. That's the only way you can really finish the season with a victory. So, you know, I think, you know, being through it myself over these years, you know, 5, 10, definitely 15, 20 years from now, you're going to remember that. You know, and obviously this is something no one's ever seen before. It's unprecedented. We all hope that we get another opportunity and, that, you know, it's safe for all of us to get that opportunity. But if it does unfortunately end this way, there's really not much a better way than to be an arch rival in three overtimes, you know, and, uh, and that was fantastic. So, Matt, you know, you've been on varsity two years now, right? Yes, sir. And uh, put a lot of hard work in. And 
out of the three of uh, you, know, you've had a pleasure of playing with your brother on the team, so you've kind of been through the process as well since fourth grade. Matt, what are your sentiments and thoughts right now, not only about your career, playing with your brother, and uh, you know the excitement of you being a part of it on Wednesday night? Uh, well, Wednesday night's a blast because I've, you know, I've played basketball here for eight years and I've never had an experience like that. I don't think I've ever even gone past fourth quarter, not, let alone an overtime or two, even three. So to have that kind of experience against a very much a rival in league team was quite an experience. It's electrifying. So it's, it was a blast. Honestly, I mean, I wouldn't trade it in for the world. Uh, having my brother on the team's all is automatically hilarious because you get someone to beat on and you have to show them every day. You it beat helps them up you at home and then yeah. you get to beat them on the court. It helps right? you work. It helps you work harder because you have to you have to beat them every day. You can't lose or you'll never hear the end of it. So I've you know, you work hard to beat them every day. Play a little more than them just so you have that edge. Mm -hmm. And then what else am I forgetting that? Well, you know, you just brought up a good point and I guess I, I don't know if this is a fair question, but do you think that maybe helped you become a better player like I mean, obviously, you want to be competitive whether it's against, you know, Bradley or you know, some of our underclassmen. But when it's your brother, did you feel that extra little juice? To, yeah, yeah, I, I got to get this guy. Oh yeah, you. The moment my brother came on varsity, I mean, I've I'm competitive with a lot of things, especially my other teammates as well. But the moment it becomes your brother, it's a little bit different to, uh, especially because then it follows you home. You know, if it, if I beat Diener on the court, I can just. I can turn off my phone if he beats me, you know, I don't have to listen to him, but he's kind of he laughing comes at home, you over there. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it happened too much, but oh, it happened. I know it happened, but uh, when it's your brother, it follows you home and you got to hear about it for a little longer. It makes you work harder. It makes you pick your head up every day and know who you have to beat, who you have to outplay and what you have to do to beat them. So it definitely helps you be more competitive and compete harder. Yeah. And, I, and just the fact that, man, I mean, you know, for the rest of your life, have pictures and films of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, how special is that, right? The, the stories, I'm sure, are going to change over the course of years when you become grandparents <laughs> one day. You're like, all right, I did that. No, I'm glad you were able to experience that. That's a tremendous mm -hmm. opportunity. I mean, in a couple of our scrimmages, you know, I've seen you beating up your little brother. No. Of course, he's not so little anymore. But, <laughs> no. but I think it's a big difference, you know, from every day to, you know, once in a while. And so, especially you know, the competing for the same similar spots, your guards, you know, so um, that, had, that had to be a great thing for your family, I would think, so. Um, Jacob, you know, I mean, you, uh, you're the one senior up here that uh, has had tremendous success, not only in basketball, but also in other sports. You know, you want a district with soccer, so, you know, I think that that definitely helps you from what I saw this year. All five of our seniors gave tremendous leadership, but I thought that little extra, you know, you brought to the table having won a district in soccer um, and stuff like that. And, and, and yeah, that's right, to both of you, that's right, I'm sorry. And uh, But I do think that, yeah, playing for Coach Rohde and having a district championship, do you think, I guess in fairness, yeah, man, I'm sorry, that that did help you in, in, in getting ready with, for the basketball season and where we went? Oh, yeah, uh, it prepares you for that game, like close game situation, because soccer's always, soccer's a long game with, very close. It's never that like it's never like you're down by 20 points and mm -hmm. an overtime. You know, it's you're going to be within one two goals of every team you play, and that could change like that. So you have to be ready for that, and it definitely trains you to be prepared in those situations. Slow it down and sure. keep your head. What do you think, Jake? Uh, yeah, I agree. I really think that being able to actually be in a district uh, once before has uh, strengthened the kind of like beating heart that you have to win. Like you want to win. Once you win one district, you, you want more. So, um, yeah, so for, for when it comes to basketball, I, I think that winning a district really made us want to have more of that taste for victory. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, last year, um, you know, with the seniors we had that, I thought they did a nice job. I thought there was really a lot of good leadership there. Do you think that you learned anything from them in a positive note that carried over to help you with basketball leadership, not just yourself, but all of you? and leading this group? Um, yeah, I definitely saw some, uh, some skill that, skills that I, would let, that I wanted to carry on to my next, uh, the next, the next grade. I, I really looked up to them and I was like, well, I guess I'm a senior now, so I better show that I'm a senior and uh, give it all, my all and show everybody else on the court that this, I'm a senior and I can do this, this is it. So 
Do you think that's added pressure or is that a, a It is added pressure, but uh, I, I work well with pressure, so. Yeah, well, he's got a, a buzzer beater against Vassar to show that. I think that kind of started the season yeah. off. Uh, Jacob against Vassar, I think it was our third game, a team that we you know, haven't shown previously to have a lot of success against. A battle with them, and we had had a lead, and they came back, took the lead, and then, you know, pretty well documented. As a matter of fact, I think it's been on our Sting report insignia there that uh, you know, your, your buzzer beater against them, which I think really is what got the fans involved. You could look back, mm -hmm. you know, so it's really been a magical season in so many ways. We had some ups and we had some downs, but I think the, the most important thing, uh, guys, is that even when we were kind of going down a little bit, it, we always had that avenue to come up. And again, I always go back to that's the leadership. You know, as coaches, we can put it out there and stuff like that, but you've got to have internal leadership. And that's what the, you know, and, and Jacob Elliott, who's unfortunately not able to make it here today, is a senior, hasn't played basketball in a couple of years, broke his wrist, and wasn't able to play, came out, and, you know, I think it took him a while uh, to get in basketball shape and stuff like that. But I think the kids saw that even as a senior, like, God, this guy's not quitting, you know? And, and he wasn't coming off a season like, football and, and, and soccer to prepare it. I mean, Bradley, you know, one thing I got to really commend you for in the last two years that I've been here coaching is that you didn't play a fall sport, but you were the first one in the weight room. You were the first one here at practice and the open gyms and the shootings and, stuff, and the Sundays and stuff like that. And, to ha you know, for people to see that, these underclassmen and uh, seniors there, at the end of the day, you know, that's a senior leading by example. So, I, I you know, you kind of kept it going, you know, until we all got together. So, I mean, for that, I know all myself and the coaching staff, and and speaking on behalf of the underclassmen, they appreciated that, Bradley. You know, and Jacob, you know, you and I have talked beginning of the year. It was, you know, senior year. It's time to, you know, basically, you know, sh put up or shut up, right? Yep. And and you guys all did that, but uh, you know, Jacob, you were honored the other day. Uh, came through. Normally, we wouldn't share this to the banquet, but unfortunately, we don't know if we're going to have a banquet um, until after all this clears. Uh, but you were honored at being um, all league in basketball. And uh, we had four gentlemen that, that uh, were honored with that, and we shared them with you yesterday. You know, I, I was able to have the pleasure of seeing your reaction. You know, what was your thought? Because I don't think you had any idea it was happening. What was your thoughts when you received that? Uh, I was surprised, I will admit. Um, I really felt a very huge surge of gratification when it happened. I was, I was honestly surprised. and. I guess I could say that all that hard work but definitely paid off in the end. So. Well, it, it was well deserved. Yes. And, uh, you know, as coaches, you always say, I wish I could name 10 kids, but, um, you know, I, there's no doubt that, you know, our team deserves the success that we did achieve, every one of you. Um, and the thing about it is, I think I share, I hope I shared with you that the thing about this senior class that I will never forget is how everything you gave back to the kids, how much you gave back to the program. You know, and sometimes when underclassmen maybe are playing a little bit more than you or something like that, that's not easy. And I understand that, but you guys have always been there to support them from the minute, you know, every day, every practice, every game. And, you know, Jacob, you gave up, I thought, quite a bit of your, probably your offensive skills. Um, we knew they were there, but you know, because I always seem to put you on the other team's best defensive player, whether, mm -hmm. as I said, whether they were 300 pounds and six foot eight, or you know, five foot ten and 160 pounds. So, yeah. you know, how did you get your mindset ready for that? You know, knowing that you may guard like the, one of the best guards in the league, you know, Wednesday to uh, a six foot eight, 350 pound guy from Harbor Beach. Well, I'm going to be honest and say that I really didn't. I didn't think about it. I just, I just did it. I really, I didn't think about, oh, I'm going to do this when I guard him. I just thought about doing what I do. And I did that. So I was, that's, that's my strategy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Ethan, same thing. You know, a lot of the guys you face, you're always facing the other team center at six, five guys, six, six guys. And even though you're, Obviously, you got some size to you. you know, how did you mentally prepare for that? I just kind of knew what I had to do, and I just executed it as needed to. Yeah, and you did that as well. You two guys, you know, sometimes you had some, you know, underclassmen that were maybe getting a little more time, but yet you guys were always prepared. Whether I put you in the game for a minute or, or you're in the game for 8 or 10 or 20 or whatever, 
you guys always seem, and in, in practice, we could you you know say, okay, you're going to play this particular guy, and pay your, you know, resemble this guy today. You know, how did you keep your mindset so positive, and you know, keep working, knowing that you know, hopefully, you know, you, 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 I know we all want to play, but you may not play a lot, or you may have some guys play more. How did you keep your mind so sharp and your skills so sharp? Well, well you know, over the years, I think a lot of that comes from when I played baseball. Because as a pitcher, I had to really not let it get to me if I didn't throw well. I had to be able to mentally get back on track or else I wouldn't throw well. And so I think a lot of that carried back over on the basketball, so I wasn't going to, so I wouldn't, you know, sit there and get angry if someone went in over me I like that. And I think, you know, being ready for pretty much whenever I go in, it's almost sort of like what Jacob said. I didn't have any preconceived notions of, Oh, I'm pro I'm gonna do this, this, this. You know, this is who I'm gonna guard and how. I was just I was sort of thinking about everything I could do. You know, I could do anything. That's really it. Well, that's a great answer. Great answer. Yeah, I've always been a role player in basketball. I've never been this. Or I've never even didn't mean to be six four, but six five. Six five. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't get to be taller. I, I always knew I was a role player, and I always wanted to be that. So I was focused on you know I. When I go in the game, I'm in, in for whatever I'm told. So I'm going in and I'm doing what my job is. And I've, I've got to go in, do that job. And so you don't even think about it going into the game. You get your name called, you go in, you figure out the first thoughts. Who am I guarding? What is, like, to figure out everything that's going on and know that you're right there. And then once you do that, you're in the game. You've practiced it a ton of times. You've gone over it and over it. Eventually, it's just, it's almost reflex. So you just play off of reflex and you, so you don't as much mentally prepare yourself as, I've been practicing for eight weeks, and I know what I'm going to get yelled at for, and I know what I'm not going to get yelled at for. So you try and do what, do what you can, do your best, and then however it ends up, ends up. Jacob? Yeah, I mean, it just, when I'm in the game and, I'm, and I say I'm starting, I just let everything go. I don't, I don't think about anything. I just go in there and I do what I'm supposed to do, what I've been practicing to do, what I've, what I've practiced so much that it's become muscle memory and I just do it. Half of the jump shots that I made, I just, I don't even realize I make them. I just, I, I jump, I shoot, and I'm we like, did. Oh, I made it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that's just how it is. Well, you know, I know I know. deep in your hearts, you hope we have that opportunity in the next few weeks to, I'm sure Sandusky and all the other schools hope the same thing. And You know, I hope that, you know, we shared earlier, you know, I'm sure you'll keep your guys you know, close and then let make sure that we're all trying to stay in our own individual shape and stuff like that. So if we're able to practice again and play, um, you know, whether that happens or not, that's out of our control. But I know a couple of things that have been in your control is, you know, how you lead by example on the on the athletic fields and and, and of course on the basketball court in the situation. Um, but you, you know, it should be noted that actually all five seniors have over a 3.0 and. They have led by example. These four gentlemen, uh, without embarrassing them, are over 3.5, 4.0, 3, 5, or 3.95, 4.0, 3.9, 3.95, and so. You know, anytime in sports you're going to have all your student athletes, you you want to achieve three things. You know, you want to have a, they have to be a student first. You know, that's the really most important thing. It is the most important thing. You, you got to make sure. Second thing is. You know, they're good citizens, they're good people. That, that's really what you want. And if somebody makes a mistake, they're still good people, but you'll work with them. And of course, the athletic part of it. And, you know, one of the things that you guys have definitely done is led that way as student athletes, student athletes. And as students, you've all, as I said, with an average GPA of 3.98 and, and you know, 4.0. And uh, that's just, I'm not going to say unheard of. You don't get that very often in any sport. So, um, you know, there's so much that you guys have led by example that our younger classmen and the younger kids, you know, have seen. I guess if you guys want to share anything, you know, Ethan, what's the one thing that, you know, I think you're, what are you going to remember, whether it's this year or your career, and what's the one thing you'd like to relay down to anybody else athletically, but in the basketball program in the upcoming years that you'd like to get that message across? Uh, something I'd want the underclassmen to always remember is to box out. It's essential to the game. If you don't box out, then you're not going to get the ball and you're not going to be able to score, essentially. They're just going to keep stealing and scoring on you. Right, one thing I would like the underclassmen to think about is that 
you know, sometimes it's be tough being on a team. You don't always agree with everybody. You know, sometimes you try to play by yourself, not really as a team. But you need to be a team and you're not going to win. That's why we did so well this year. We played as a team. Against certain teams, we were outmatched to me personal skill, but we played as a team well enough to beat them. So stick with it. Just keep have your teammates back. Uh, yeah, anyone coming up, the one thing you have to work on is your own work ethic because if you don't, you can call any game's going to go down to a ton of things. There might ref might have made a bad call. There's going to be tons of variables that you can't control. But the one thing you can is your own heart. If you work at it every day, I mean, I'm no. I'm no LeBron James, I'm not out here dunking, I'm not 6'5", but what I can control is how much I work and how much every day I go out to compete. In the end of the day, it's going to make your team better, it's going to make you better, and you're going to do better things if you go out and work. So you have to work for it, you have to keep constant work, and that'll help in school, that'll help in uh, sports, and that'll help in everyday life. So just keep your work ethic up and keep pushing. Some advice for the upcoming basketball players coming up. Uh, for one, I would just like to say that it is very important that you do your job. I know Brad mentioned it earlier, but it's really important, I believe, that to do your job because in a game, when it comes to specific jobs in the game, you each have your own job. You, you, one person may be a scorer, another person may be a rebounder, another person may be an assister. It's all your own jobs. You have to work on your own jobs and not try to be someone you're not. I know I had trouble with that during my, some of my years. I tried doing things that I can't do, but I eventually figured out that my job is to lead and I would say assist, honestly. But um, just know that you as a team, however many people on your team is, each person has their own job. You know, guys, uh, one of the special moments, I think, as a team and for myself was seeing, you know, being a part of your senior night, you know. And it was it was more than than just the victory. I mean that was very special. But just the way the community was there to support you, the way the cheerleaders are, you know, and they have their own season yet they're willing to come and cheer for you after their you know season, every successful season. You know the way the kids on the bench, the JV players, just the love and respect from the student section that they all have for you as a team, really had to make your senior night special. I would imagine, but you know the other thing too is just how close, which is very important, how close it seems you are with your parents. And I know that you know the four of you, and of course you know our whole team is. It seems like we have every, uh, we have all our parents support our kids. I mean, they're, they're, we have a great cheering section. We have a great support staff. But I, you know, watching you walk out with your individual parents uh, had to be a very special moment for you. And um, I guess I, I'm going to ask you, you know, what are your thoughts on being able to walk out that last time through that, through your, you know, through the tunnel of, you know, the tunnel of our players and cheerleaders with your parents? So what, how did that make you feel, Jacob? Um, when it comes to my parents, um, it was anything I ever wanted. Walking down um, and having the crowd cheer for me and my parents while I sat there with giving them the rose, my mom the rose and everything. It was. It was anything I ever wanted because I, I, I have always used their, their comments, anything they've said about my game, any, any, anything that, would, uh, that they wanted to do to help me. I use, always used it as fuel to uh, do better the next time I played. And for, the, for it being the last time I played, I definitely, I, I definitely would, could not have asked for any more. How about you, Matt? Um, I really got to thank my parents. They've always been there when I needed it, and they've always been there when I, even when I didn't. You know, I, they've been there for... Every, I mean, I've seen my dad drive to Harbor Beach, my mom drive to Harbor Beach, and that's no small drive, and I've seen him come out just to support and then drive back home after. And they're bi very busy people, but they always made the time, and they always made it very important to come out and be supportive and to help in any way they could. They've, they've been my biggest supporter for the longest time, and I really got to thank them for that because I've not always been, you know, the easiest, and I've always <laughs> argued just enough, but they've always been there, and I really got to thank them for that. They're big supporters of mine, they've always been there to help, always try and make me better and that's, you know, it's a big thing to me so I really want to thank them, they've been a very big help in my career, my life as a whole and I love them a lot, so. You know, Bradley, your dad uh, represented the team that won the last district here, so the whole team understood that and wanted to win this district more for you probably than anybody 
just to be able to put that sticker up there uh, next to your dad from 25 years ago. Being able to walk through that tunnel with your parents, how did that make you feel? It was, it was amazing. You know, having them come to support me at all my basketball games, they've supported me you know, through school to you know, get me where I'm going afterwards. And uh, well, I think it's very fitting that they were able to because not only did my dad support me, he, you know, he played at this school a long time ago. But he was also, he also got me into basketball. He was my first basketball coach here for many years. You know, then he supported me all the way up until this point. So I think it was very fitting that he was able to walk out there with me. Uh, my, mom, she, my mom's been there the whole time. She's gone to pretty much every game that she could. You know, she, she's just, they've, uh, they've done a lot for me. And, you know, just, you know. Ethan, I'm going to ask you the same question. You know, your parents have been so heavily involved as well um, with all your sports that you played here. Um, being the last sport you're playing and walking through the senior tunnel the last time with your parents, there had to be a lot of emotions, you know. How did that make you feel? Well, you know, they're my biggest fans, and just to know that they had come out to every game by, you know, leaving work early or sometimes even not going to one of my other siblings things just for me it was kind of nice to know that they're they're always there to support me and you know all our parents we they all care really about us you know we're always cheering for each other we're really close you know we're just uh, we've been friends for a long time you know and all our parents care about each, all of us equally essentially Guys, it was great to be able to not only coach and be a part of your growth this year in the last two years, um, you know, but uh, congratulations and everything. Any last comments by, from any of you? Um, yeah, I'd, I'd really like to thank all the fans that came out. I mean, we've been a team for a long time, and this is our first winning season, and it's really nice to have that support that you guys have brought for years upon years. And parents, fans, the student section this year was crazy. i got to thank them as well. It's it's been a great season, and I mean, hopefully it's not over, but if it is, I mean, I'm thankful for every one of everybody who came out and supported. It really does mean a lot to us, and I know it's not the easiest to support a team that we haven't won in a while, and we've had some rough seasons heading up to this, but you guys all came out, and you were loud, and you were part of the team, and it really does help us, so I want to thank all of you for that. Thank you for showing up, and thank you for making the season as great as it was. I'd hope that for the people behind me, I'd hope you guys show the same support. And uh, thank you guys, it means a lot. Well guys, you know, thanks for a great season. Thank thanks you. for all you've done. And thanks for being here today. I really appreciate it. So. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you, Coach. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. And we'll be right back to give you the latest of where we're at in the sports of Memphis. Thank you. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love. Remember that to love America is to love all Americans because love has no labels. There's a buzz around Memphis. The success in the classroom. And our rich music and choir program are leading the way. By building a sound foundation. The, the future looks brighter than ever. ever. Our softball program. High Town Solid Studies. Our girls basketball program. Shooting for the stars. Our Memphis Athletic Booster program. A soccer league repeat. Knocking, Knocking down, down the competition. competition. Cross, Cross country, country state, state bound again. again. Swinging for the fences, wrestling district champs, four years in a row. Small town, Friday night lights. Memphis boys basketball, protecting the high. Memphis fast fishing team, fish on. Memphis equestrian, enjoy the ride. We have a team for you. Come be a part of it. Welcome back. Uh, thanking all the gentlemen and our Memphis Boys basketball team and our seniors who just left. We had a chance to meet some fantastic young men that all of Memphis is proud of and is going to be proud of in the, in the very near future. Um, in regards to where we're at right now uh, with winter sports, our basketball program uh, will not be able to compete like all the others. Uh, with the epidemic that has transpired, the governor has closed all schools till April 6th. 
during that time there will be no practicing or no games or anything scheduled. Uh, our hope is that in the best interest of the kids, once this has been handled with and dealt with, that maybe that we can get back onto the playing, playing fields. But until then, all programs, all practices, all workouts, anything scheduled at all uh, through the schools will be closed. And of course at Memphis we honor that, respect it, and we pray and bless all your families in the best interests of everyone here at Memphis and also outside of Memphis. So again, we thank you for all your support. We pray and your, all your families will be in our thoughts and we wish everybody the best and look forward to seeing you when this situation has been handled. Thank you. Thank you.